Good Friday afternoon, guys. I'm Jerry Miller, and welcome to the I Love Seville Show. Thank you kindly for joining us. So much to cover on today's program on a glorious day to be above the mud. Happy Friday the 13th to you. We wish you nothing but the best of luck on Friday the 13th. Remember, luck is earned through hard work and diligent planning. A lot we're going to cover on today's program. Breaking news for you. Multiple elected officials, current, have announced their candidacy or announced their intentions for re-election right here on this set in this studio in downtown Charlottesville. We'll explain that to you today on the program. We just finished a fabulous 90-minute interview with Donna Price, chairwoman of the Avalon County Board of Supervisors. Donna Price running now for the 55th district in what should be a fascinating and hotly contested election. The 55th, also now the new home district to an institution in Rob Bell. Price versus Bell, Bell versus Price. It's gonna be the foundation a fodder for this talk show for months to come. The Daily Progress is down to two news reporters. You heard me correctly. The paper of record for Central Virginia. Central Virginia, let's ballpark as 300,000 people, including home to the Commonwealth's flagship university, the University of Virginia. And there are two reporters they're going to cover the entire Central Virginia footprint. I worked at the Daily Progress, one of the youngest editors in the history of the Daily Progress, yours truly. My first job out of UVA, the Daily Progress. Inside knowledge, firsthand experience of working at the DP. We'll discuss the collateral damage of two news reporters at the Daily Progress today on the I Love Seville show. We're gonna to talk Tony Bennett and his UVA recruiting class, national recognition. So Tony Bennett returns his top six scores from last year and brings in four stud basketball players that are ranked in the top 150 in America on the hardwood. All those stories and more, including Bodo's Bagels, going from darling, I need, a, I need a word that's the opposite. Judah Wickhauer, let's go to the two shot. You're very much a wordsmith. Judah Wickhauer, our steam director. I need a word that is the uh, opposite of darling that also starts with D. Opposite of darling? Going from <clears throat> darling, viewers and listeners, help me out here. Um, going despised? For, oh, okay, that's good. Any, any else you wanna go? Uh, let's see, darling to... Uh... That's pretty good, though. That was good. Viewers and listeners, anyone... Opposite of darling that starts with the letter D. We'll go to Spies for now. I see the wheels turning. So, Bodo's Bagel's going from darling to despised. Literally, overnight. In Charlottesville and Almoral County. An utter travesty how this beloved brand is currently being treated by some in this community. Disturbing, demoralized, depressing, downright disgusting how this brand is being treated right now by many in this community. A brand who otherwise was beloved beloved for generations. We'll talk about that fall from grace today on the I Love Seville show. We encourage everyone to check out the um, 231 Fest. Judah, if we can get uh, on screen a lower third. You can buy tickets at castlehillcider.com forward slash 231. I will be there. The 231 Fest presented by Castle Hill Cider. An ultimate Sunday fun day this Sunday featuring a taste of Virginia's premier craft beverage scene in the Southwest Mountains. Spend a day in the stunning grounds of Castle Hill enjoying wine, beer, cider, 
delicious food trucks, live music, local artisans, and activities for kids. Castle Hill, we love you. And the 231 Festival. Kevin Yancey, King of Waynesboro, says Judah and Jerry, demon. That's good. We'll take demon. Kevin Yancey, I'll give you some, some props. Going from darling to demon. I like it. You like it? Yeah. I like it. I like it very much, too. All right, um, J-Dubs, you got the first sizzle reel ready to rock and roll. Friend of the program, Jim Hingley, Almoral County Commonwealth's attorney. On Tuesday of this week, we spent an hour in change with a kind man, an intelligent man, an open-minded man, a well-read man, a fantastic conversationalist, an A-plus interview, an all-around A-plus-plus guy. Jim Hingley, are you listening or watching today's show? I hope you are, sir. I have nothing but the most respect for Commonwealth's attorney, Jim Hingley. On the show, you got that, that sizzle, that sound ready to rock? I do. I'll call for it in a matter of moments. On this show, with Commonwealth's attorney, Jim Hingley, I asked him, will you run for re-election? This is breaking news, unreported, unannounced by any other media outlet. Jim Hingley. Straightforward in his answer. J Dubs, Judah Wickhauer. In three, in two, in one, Jim Hinchley. Wondering this, multiple people are asking this on the feed. We asked Mayor Snook um, last week if he was going to run for re election. Mayor Snook said yes, he was going to run for re election right here in this chair. Are we going to be fortunate to have you run for re election? That would yes. be that would be what next year, right? Yes, 2019. 2023. Yeah, I mean, 2019 was when I first elected. Right. It was like 2023 is the next election. Sorry. <laughs> so you're going to run? I am absolutely going to run. Fantastic. That is great news. And and um, well, and I've already. Um, I haven't made a formal announcement because uh -huh. it's not time for a formal announcement. This is until 2023. Uh -huh. But I've I've told the Albemarle County Democratic Committee <coughs> and, and others. Uh, people who who need to know because if I'm not running, then they got to find changes somebody. things. Right. Um, so it's not at all a secret, um, and hasn't been. But um, but just so people understand this, I'm I'm not making a formal announcement, Fine. but I am I am running. Yes. Well, that's to our uh, the community's benefit here. So that's breaking news right here on the I Love Seville Network. Friend of the program, viewer and listener Jim Hingley, announcing his campaign for re-election on this set. Judah, in a matter of moments, I'm going to ask you this question so you can get the wheels turning. What do you like about Jim Hinchin? This is what I like about him. I like his straightforward nature. I like his open-minded perspective. I like his willingness to innovate. I like his thoughts and perspective on criminal justice reform. I like his deprioritization of incarceration and instead prioritizing rehabilitation through counseling and other mythologies. I like his fair approach to justice. I like his commitment to equality. I like his total understanding that the justice system for so long is systematically set against or weighted against people of color. And I like his willingness to make a change or fight for change for systematic racism. I like everything about this guy. I think it would out be Albemarle County's benefit to have Hingley reelected for this community. Judah Wickhauer, two shot, two shot, two shot. Jim Hingley, for you, my friend. Well, you didn't leave me much to much to ground to go over, but I I think he's uh, I think he's earnest. I think he's honest, and uh, and I definitely see a uh, heart for uh, for people, and like you said, for justice. And I think that's that's a great thing. We'll welcome our friends from Danville, Virginia, to the program. We'll welcome Scott Aaronworth, the Esquire from Virginia Beach, John Blair, the Esquire from Stanton, to the program. 
Interestingly, we broke more news on the set of the I Love Seville Network. This from an Esquire as well. I mean, it seems like it's breaking news week for the attorneys on this program, right? Yeah. I asked on this set, Lloyd Snook, who is, how many feet away is his office from this studio? Would you characterize it as what? I'd say... 25? More than that. 30? 40. 40 feet? Yeah, 40 to 50. If I put the over-under at 40 feet, let's see, 40 feet? Oh, man. 40 feet, I'll give you 40 feet. 40 feet, his firm from this studio. Walking. Same hallway. Yeah. Same building. We see him all the time. Mm-hmm. Mayor Lloyd Snook, Charlottesville City Council, on this set. I said, Mayor Snook, are you going to run for re-election? His, in- his answer, in a matter of moments, j Dubs, you got that sound ready to rock? Yep. Three. Two. One. Did you say if you're going to run for re-election? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was, Lloyd, I was trying to help you out. Did you just say that? <laughs> uh, that? I probably will. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't you say at one of the uh, didn't uh, Ginny Bixby quote you um, in an article in the Daily Progress if I run for re-election I'm going to be held to what I say today I mean did you tip it off then because I thought that was a tip off so you're saying you probably will well you know uh, yeah, I, I expect to but uh, things could change I don't know okay there we go Lloyd Snook running for re-election current mayor of Charlottesville Announced his intentions to run for re-election here on the I Love Seville Network. So, Judah, I'll let you go first on this one. I took all the thunder on Jim Hingley last time and why we liked Hingley. Why you like Mayor Lloyd Snook, for those that are watching the program. Mayor Snook, let's see. Um, In Mayor Snook, I see a... I see level-headedness, intelligence... um, you know, he's been in law, so he knows, uh, you know, this isn't just, uh, you know, like an activist, um, an activist, uh, pro- you know, program, you know, like jumping in to like try to, I don't know, do what activists do. I, th- I think, uh, I think Lloyd Snook is grounded and um, we may not agree on all of our politics, but I don't see him as being so far out there that that he won't uh, he won't seek uh, common ground with uh, with those of us that that aren't um, that aren't as as liberal as some of the council is, and I really appreciate the fact that he um, you know he's got a uh, a desire to to meet in the middle with us with everybody. Very well said, J Dubs. Very well said. Thank you don't you. like the J Dubs nickname. We need to find a new nickname. I'm a big nickname guy. You I'm not. Realized. What's that? <laughs> and I'm not. You don't like nicknames? If somebody... Nicknames are a sign of endearment. A yeah, term of endearment. They can be. How is J Dubs not a term of endearment? You tell me. J Dubs is a term of endearment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what I like about Lloyd Snow. As we conversate today on the Alex Eagle Show. Has anyone realized local government in the city of Charlottesville, how consistent and stable it's become. Has anyone realized local government in the city of Charlottesville, how much in the background it currently is? Has anyone realized of local government in the city of Charlottesville, how no one is now on a, the morning someone wakes up, immediately petrified or checking social media to see what boombastic statements Bombastic. Bombastic statements or poems rich in graphic language. Those items are no longer on social media. We made it through budget season. The headlines are not about graphic imagery, poetry. The headlines instead are about a community finding its feet and moving forward. You read it that way? Yeah, I think so. I, there's, there's no, uh, there's no drama. <clears throat> uh, just I think a desire to, uh, to do what's best for for our city. Yeah, that's all it is. I mean, he just wants to get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. 
It doesn't need to be in the headlines. Right. I mean, we're fortunate to have this guy leading the charge. No national publications picking up Mayor Lloyd Snook and talking about him. There's no CNN, New York Times, Bloomberg, Daily Mail interviews right now. You know where Snook's being quoted? The Progress, Seville Tomorrow, NBC 29 and the I Love Seville Network. Guess what? That's where he should be quoted. Yeah. Right? Local news. Local news. He's a local mayor. It shouldn't be global news. It's yeah. local news. We shouldn't be making Richmond headlines with, uh, with how we're, you know, our, our mayor is, is disparaging our, our city. Right. That's and this seems like common sense, does it not? It would seem to be. It would seem to sense. be common sense. Does it not? I mean, good night. Good Lord. All right. Let's go to the Donna Price interview we just had. I can't wait to get your take on this. <coughs> Donald Price was on Real Talk. Real Talk with Keystone. Quinn Beckham was on there. Jude and I were on there as well. Donna Price is the chairwoman of the Avalon County Board of Supervisors. She's currently running for the 55th District. 55th District, a newly created district that's no longer gerrymandered. We learn, Jim Hinchley highlighted this, Four delegates representing Amaral County. Very much splintered the district was. Now very much unified the district is. And we're going to have a race, whether that's in 2022 or 2023, it's to be determined. We're going to have a race that's essentially going to pit Price versus Bell, Bell versus Price. Donna Price versus Rob Bell. Rob Bell, an institution. Rob Bell has the gift of communication. How many times have we seen viewers and listeners, Rob Bell on the side of the road, holding a sign saying, thank you for voting for me. Rob Bell literally on the side of Route 29 or in the entrance of my neighborhood, holding a sign, thank you for voting for me. Literally, the guy hand writes letters to voters. Hand writes them on promotions, business, work. Hand writes them about sons or daughters graduating from high school or having athletic achievement. achievement. Dude knows how to communicate. So does Donna Price. Today's interview with DP Donna Price was phenomenal. You can find it on ilovesiegel.com later today. What struck you from the interview with Donna Price? Uh, you know, I, I like her... Uh uh, I like I like how she lays things down. Um, there's no uh, there's no glitz or glamour. It's just uh, you know straightforward and um, and she's got a great dry sense of humor that <laughs> meshes perfectly with my with uh, with what makes me laugh. I, I really enjoyed her uh, her humor. I mean, she was just she handled everything. Mm-hmm. 90 minutes questions from all of us, real straightforward questions that she handled. Them. Very well considered yeah. in her speech. Very well considered. Primed to lead. Unafraid of bullies. Unafraid of hard challenge. And she said how, uh, she said how well she did at the, uh, at the firing range, so the bullies got to be careful. <laughs> Donna Price in the 55th. That's going to be a race of epic proportions. Epic proportions. Now, I want to highlight something that concerns me. I used to work there. This week, and I saw her on Wednesday at Three Notch, Rory, for Neil Williamson's Free Enterprise Forum Mixer, Allison Rabel, the Albemarle County reporter for the Daily Progress, announced her resignation from the newspaper. Tyler Hamill has also announced his resignation from the newspaper. That means the newspaper of record, the daily publication of record for Central Virginia, a readership of 300,000 plus or minus people, Judah, including the flagship university of the Commonwealth, the University of Virginia, mm -hmm. is down to two reporters. 
They've got to be worried. <laughs> Dude, I used to work there. When I worked there, we barely had enough ammunition and human capital to cover uh, Central Virginia. But we had like 10x the reporters they have now. Explain to me how a newspaper can cover a 300 person region that is as dynamic and complex as this one with two reporters. Someone explain that to me. I know a Catherine lot. Catherine of... Knott and Ginny Bixby, all that's left. I know a lot of the financial publications, uh, online publications, have bots write their, uh, write their articles. Maybe, uh, maybe the Daily Progress will find a way to have a bot write uh, most of the articles. And that's a great, great statement here. Is the newspaper of record going to become um, a, a factory of syndicated news? Syndicated news from the Associated Press, news not tied to the community, news not localized, humanized, and personalized for community readership. And you know what's interesting? Hmm. Not only did the Daily Progress suffer from a personnel standpoint, two reporters left next week, but it upped its subscription. It increased its monthly fee for the subscription. Staff cuts, subscription increase, all within the same time frame. Less Explain for, that to me. Less for more. It's the new, uh, <clears throat> it's the new uh, uh, business model. The newspaper is the watchdog of the community. You mean it should be? Should be. Right? It's what keeps elected officials honest. Developers developing within zoning ordinances and codes. It's what keeps people on their P's and Q's. When you lose the watchdog of the community, you start losing the element of honesty and trust associated with having someone looking over your shoulder. We should all be concerned about two reporters' news. There's also sports reporters. I'm, strict, I'm talking strictly news here. Covering a 300,000 person community. I worked there. To say they're underpaid is equivalent to saying we need oxygen to breathe and to survive. <coughs> we should be concerned. It's not the SIVO Weekly. They do a great job. They're searching for a news editor right now. That's going to pick up the slack. Hmm. Charlottesville tomorrow, they do a great job. But they're not going to pick up the slack for the daily paper of record. That's not their model. NBC 29 and CBS 19 are also feeling the pain right now. As their staff becomes younger and younger and fresh out of college and less in number from a personnel standpoint. If we are not careful, Central Virginia soon very will become a news desert. And that's the last we need, the last thing we need in a community as dynamic as this one, with as many layers of the onion as this one. What am I missing? Nothing. I think you're right. It, I, <clears throat> I, think it's hard for, uh, I think it's hard for citizens, people, to, uh, to connect and understand um, and be able to hear their voices heard when they have no um, when they have no way of of connecting with the news, connecting with uh, you know what's going on in the community. Uh, you you're left uh, you're left kind of out in the dark. And uh, I think there's a reason why news is so important in in all communities. Because it helps, uh, it helps keep us aware of, of what those in power are doing. Like you said, um, keeps people um, keeps people. Uh, uh, you've got your watchdogs. I'm worried about that, guys. Now let's change gears and go photos. Judah, last week. Can you think of a more beloved local brand? What are the most beloved local brands in Central Virginia? Let's rattle some off. No particular order. 
Ragged Mountain Running Shop in the Lauren Zones. Last week, Bodo's Bagels. Mincers. Mincers. What are the most beloved local brands in this community? I mean, there's a lot of them. Rattle and Wolf. Shot whiskey jar. I mean, you know, anything. Any Notch Brewery. Yeah. What else comes to mind? Uh, Viewers and listeners, most beloved local brands. Kevin Yancey, Scott Aaronworth, Lynn Snyder. Most beloved local brands in this community. John Blair. Champion. Champion's a great one. Most beloved local brands. Ace. Biscuit and Barbecue. Zovolo Restaurant. CNO. The Jefferson Theater. Mm. The Paramount. Most beloved local brands. Just go down the corridors. Maya Restaurant. Public yeah. Fish and Oyster. Yeah. Last week, you could make a legitimate argument that Bodo's Bagels was the most beloved local brand. The, the darling of the darlings. Mm -hmm. The best in show. The prom queen. The class president. This week, a contingent on social media is doing its best to destroy this brand because of collective bargaining and because of the unionization efforts of its UVA quarter staff. This same small contingent that is quite vocal on a number of hot button topics is trying to tar and feather a darling and turn it into a demon. Hmm. This locally owned business is having to navigate tumultuous waters and it's doing it without a compass in hand. Did the owners ever think last week or at any time of owning their business that they would have a press conference in front of their store? That they would have city councilor Cena McGill and delegate Sally Hudson and TV stations and print reporters covering essentially a, a press conference or what could have evolved into a boycott led by staff. Now you know what's happening. The inner workings of the Bodo's small business are being posted on social. And the brand and owners are being demonized. <coughs> and it's unfortunate. Last week, the darling of food and beverage photos. Paid well, team members. Quality of life, high. Tenure with their staff, high, long. This week, not the case. What do you make of this? What do you think is going to happen? Where do you think it's gonna go? You know what I think is gonna happen? The corner location I think is gonna get shut down eventually. That's <clears throat> kind of what I'm thinking as well. I, I mean. The owners are gonna say enough already. Yeah, I think. We I don't think own the, the space. Most of us know that none of the local businesses are making millions of dollars and just like paying shitty wages to their employees. Most of the most of the local places around here I think 
are doing the best they can for for their employees and they're paying them the best that they can they're just trying to survive yeah and so acting like I mean I you know I don't I don't know what they're hoping to gain I know you say it's just about money but I feel like there's got to be more than just cash it's about money it's I, about money and benefits well yeah benefits is a different thing I benefits is money it's going to require money from the owners to do the benefits and guess what the owners of Bodo's, they got supply chain issues, obviously have labor issues, have cost of goods issues, have inflation issues, have gas price issues, have taxes issues, have an economy from a global standpoint that's damn near close to crashing. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't think we're headed for a recession? Judah and I do. Do we not? Oh, definitely. Probably in hindsight, we're going to realize we already were in one. Oh, yeah. You don't know you're in a recession until long down the road. Then you realize, oh my God, that was a recession. Yep. Kevin Yancey says, Anna's Pizza is the darling, a local staple. Kevin Yancey, Waynesboro, Timberlakes, King of Waynesboro, Kevin Yancey. Scott Aaronworth of Virginia Beach says, Tavala, says Lampo. Yancey highlights Child's Family Orchard. Guys, patience. Golden rule. Benefit of the doubt. Understand macro circumstances. And if you push and push and push, like the corner location is doing, the jobs are just going to go away because the location will get shut down. And that's my prediction of what's going to happen. They'll throw their hands and say, enough already. We don't even own this location. In our rent, what we pay to operate this location, one of three at this particular UVA corner spot is the highest per month of any of the three we have. They're going to fold it. And then all those folks will realize, you know what? We had a good job. We had a good job. And then they're going to scramble to somewhere else that's not going to be nearly as good. Right. The grass is not always greener. In fact, the folks that think the grass is greener on the other side don't realize it's smoke and mirror, chemical and pesticides and fertilizer that's keeping that grass greener. And it's not authentically and genuinely as green as it looks. Darling to demon. Oh, pains me. All right, two other topics in the Friday edition of the I Love Seagull Show. Tony Bennett, Virginia men's basketball coach. His entire incoming recruiting class is ranked in the top 150 of basketball recruits. So Tony Bennett returns his top six scorers from last year's team. And he now has four additional players coming into the program. Isaac McNeely, number 44 in the nation. Leon Bond, number 51 in the nation. Isaac Trott, number 70 in the nation and Ryan Dunn at number 133 in the nation. On top of that, he's got a transfer coming in that could start for most basketball teams. Tony Bennett has taken a program and absolutely reloaded it with talent. I expect this team to contend for an ACC championship. And I want everyone to realize this. Success with sports at the university, football and basketball in particular, is positive, are positive tailwinds for locally owned businesses in this community. If this team has success and the John Paul Jones Arena is full, 
the restaurants and bars around Charlottesville and Amaro County are full. If Scott Stadium is popping and 63,000, 60,000 people are in attendance, the restaurants and the bars and the retail and the community benefit. There is no better tailwind for Charlottesville mom and pops than the success of football and basketball. Think of one. There's not one better than football or basketball success. I love Bennett, and I love this team, and I love this community. And speaking of community, this Sunday, the 231 Fest at Castle Hill, get it up on the screen, please, my friend. 12 to 5 p.m., cider, beer, wine, live music, food trucks, activities for kids, in a palatial, gorgeous landscape of Keswick and Castle Hill all to benefit the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Tickets are 50 bucks. Good night, that's affordable. Kids tickets are seven. Designated driver tickets are 15. <coughs> I will be there. Judah and Liza will be there. I can't wait. How about you? I'm definitely looking forward to it. I can't wait to try all of the uh, all the different uh, the different beverage beverage purveyors, and there's some wonderful food trucks. I'm gonna have a hard time deciding which one to go to go with. What's the biscuit, baby? I don't know. There's there's a lot of good ones there. You got a uh, philosopher's stone pizza. You love that pizza. Oh, I do love some good you like pizza. Like Angelique's. Yeah. Oh, Salty man. bald and blue oysters. Yeah, I could go for some. I could go for a little bit of everything. How about which 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 beverage are you going to have here? Castle Hill, Mary Mill Farm and Vineyard, Patch Brewery, Keswick Vineyards, Champion Brewing Company, Chestnut Oak Vineyard. All of them at Two Thirty One Fest. Oh, We're man. each going to dabble dibble dabble in Castle Hill for sure. We love S cider. Sunday afternoon, I'm definitely getting some cider, and I think with the with the with the breweries, it it may depend on on what they're what they're offering. Good take. Live music. Lord Nelson, the Judy Chops, Matt Johnson, or dropping Julia. Dropping Julia has played this network. Yeah, multiple times. Multiple times. Yeah, they're a blast. Emily Kresge. Mm hmm. That is what I love about this town. 231 Fest. And it's, and it's all going to support the, uh, the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Yeah. Which is incredible. They do amazing work. Uh, you know, we've recently had, uh, we've Millie recently had that? stories. Yeah, we've had Million, And, uh, you know, and I think uh, everybody, everybody should know what, uh, what BRAFB is doing and, uh, and help them out. Judah, you're on point tonight. Thank you. Awesome job. Seriously. Awesome job. The Friday edition of the I Love Seville Show brought to you by Skuma Boutique Dispensary. You want to win free coffee for a year? Do it through enter.greenberries.com. Free coffee for a year? Enter.greenberries.com and pump in your email address and get in the running for free coffee for a year. Skuma Boutique Dispensary with locations on Ellingwood and on the downtown mall more locations to come. I love connecting with you guys through this platform, the I Love Sebo Network. Have a good weekend. Keep it the money in the community. Remember the golden rule. And please, guys, stop demonizing the businesses that are doing their best just to survive. Stop it. Thank you for joining us. Take care.